Hey guys, the Teltaku here. Welcome to a new video, and it's been two months since my previous upload. Oof. But to my surprise, my Legion 5 video got so many views, I mean sh ton of views, in under two months. Thank you all for tuning to this slow effort kind of content. As you can see on this picture, this is my version whatever of my laptop setup. It's just a laptop, keyboard, mouse, and tablet. That's it. That's my laptop setup back then. I wanted the dual screen setup like on my past videos back in late 2016 or so, if you remember watching those. But unfortunately, my EOC monitor that you all know has died on me. It powers on, but it turns off for a split second. And then, turns on again, and now it just shut off and never come back on again. I ended up throwing it out, well, not for the PCBs for display purposes. <laughs> anyway, now I have plans for the new battle station, and this is my working version 1 of Narukiko or the Teotaku battle station. Things will change in the future, but for now, this is the part 1 of my laptop setup upgrade. So let's get to it. First setup upgrade I've done is the monitor. I ordered this monitor on 99 deals since September 9th, 2020 at midnight and it arrived 3 days later. This year is the Acer Nitro XP240 YP gaming monitor with 144Hz refresh rate and 165Hz overclock capability. Now it's time for the unboxing. Polystyrene. Inside the box, we get a DisplayPort cable, an HDMI cable, some booklets which I'm not going to read, and opening the top polystyrene thing above, we get a monitor itself. And a stand which you have to assemble yourself. Behind the bottom part of polystyrene packaging, we get a base and a power cable. That's it for the context photo box, and let's get to the assembly of the stand. Stand assembly was pretty easy. All you do is to attach a stand onto the base and screw it in real tight. Not too tight and you are set to put the stand onto the monitor. That was a really easy assembly. You can take out the stand if you want to mount it onto the monitor arm if you have one since it does support this amount. Time to put it onto the small desk. Plug it in and there you go. Second battle station upgrade I have done is putting the hub onto the setup because yeah, I need to use a USB-C port on my laptop. I use the hub to plug in my OSU tablet and my keyboard. So no more fiddling trying to plug in peripherals on the back of my laptop. I bought a ClipTech Chimo USB-C to 3 USB-A's and card reader dongle for it. And reasons there is a card reader on is because the laptop I have, the Legion 5, lacks a micro SD or SD card slot. While it's not a huge deal breaker for me, this will be a problem for content creators since cameras still use SD card. Looking at one of those sites, we have two USB 2.0 Type A ports and a USB 3.1 Type A port. And on the other side of it, we get an SD card reader and a micro SD card reader. Let's get to the planning. I decided to put the hub on the back because this is where my keyboard and my tablet plug into, and the position will be fine if I don't use it. But I ended up changing the position of the hub anyway, as you'll see on the final result. After I'm happy with the position, time for double-sided tape. Yeah, double-sided tape time.
leading us to laptop position, I figured that the good position for laptop is on the left side, right next to my monitor. But my concern is that the laptop will fall off from the side of the desk, but in the final result, it didn't, so it's not a huge issue. So I decided to put the laptop cooler, which is not plugged in, and I ended up using it as a platform where my laptop should go. And I want the monitor to face towards the front of me. So that's the planning, now let's get to the cable management. So I already done the cable management before buying the USB-C hub earlier. I bought the cable clips, tape it on, and it turned out pretty good. And it's cleaner than what I did before. Disgusting! I done that years ago in the old laptop setup revision, and yeah, looking at this angle, no cables visible from behind whatsoever, which is nice to see. One disadvantage with the cable clip that I bought is the included double-sided adhesive. It's not strong enough to hold those cables, but there's nothing to lose because I have my own double-sided tape, so I use one. Now it holds well enough, but only time will tell when the tape will come undone. For now, it looks fine. Another thing I bought is a long micro USB cable for my tablet because the white cable I use was too short and I had to cable manage it again and it's not in the cable clips but I use cable ties to hold it up with those other cables I managed earlier. It looks decent but actually clean. Another thing to note is that I didn't clip the charger wire because I have only 170 watt brick on hand so in case I went out for a trip or something and wanted to carry a laptop with me, I had to unclip the charger wires and shove it onto my bag so yeah. Another thing I added is my sister's old lamp which my mom used as a bedside lamp or something. But unfortunately, the battery was bulging. It is still usable as a USB power lamp, but for darkroom streams, I had to use it. I held it up with the small amount of double-sided tape and maybe I will replace the lamp to something better very soon. I added the S which is the first alphabet for my actual name, not nickname so don't mind me. I also added the DIY 2 key switch tester which is made out of cardboard, literally jerry rig. I put the laptop on here and plug everything onto the back. are done. This is it, the first revision of Narukiko or the Teotaku Battle Station, also known as my laptop setup. There are minor things I put on the setup so I'll go through things I have in the setup as seen here. The heart of the setup is my current laptop, the Lenovo Legion 5 15 with AMD Ryzen 7 4800H CPU clock at 2.9GHz, 8-core 16-thread which definitely annihilates the Intel rivals. It also does have 8 gigs of DDR4-3200 RAM which is running on a single channel and NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1650 with 4 gigabytes of GDDR6 video RAM. Storage on this laptop is a 512 gigabyte Samsung PM981A M.2 NVMe SSD and a secondary 500GB HGST drive that I installed myself. It's also a drive that I pull out from my Acer Aspire 4738G with bad graphics chip. External storage was also 500GB, a Toshiba Cadvio USB 3.0 external drive which is what my mom used to use until she gave it to me years ago. Total storage for this setup was 1.5 terabytes but I will be upgrading the storage in the future. The monitor I mentioned earlier was an Acer Nitro XP240YP gaming monitor. 
is the 24-inch 144Hz IPS monitor with 165Hz overclock capability as Acer themselves claimed and I was able to get 165Hz refresh rate with HDMI 2.0 as my laptop doesn't have DisplayPort but it does have USB-C port with DisplayPort support so I'm not sure if it supports high refresh rate on the USB-C port so we will see when I get the hub upgrade very soon. This monitor does support AMD FreeSync but Nvidia does adopt the G-Sync support on the AMD FreeSync monitor so yeah, we'll see if it does support G-Sync on the AMD FreeSync monitor via the USB-C DisplayPort adapter. So I'm not sure if it does. Color accuracy and brightness were actually much better than my Legion 5's 120Hz display. And that literally burned my eyes if I crank the brightness on this monitor all the way up. It's much brighter than that. My eyes! Decorations are just the one I have because... YOLO Keyboard is my modified Armageddon MK8-3C for Falcon 2017 with Killbox Brown switches I bought this board back in July 10th, 2018 and I started the mod lock back in mid 2019 Does have Ultimo Blue switches when it's a stock look Now I decided to change the switches and it doesn't sound clicky whatsoever It took me a year to completely finish the mod and the typing experience is just well average after mod But I hit problems in the mod lock I have done earlier First up is the botched solder job since I used lead free solder instead of leather solder. I used a cheapo soldering iron for this job. Second of all, the PCB is finicky. While installing new switches, I hit a major problem during this process. After LEDs are off, it was fine all the time. Otherwise, I'm proud of what I've done to this keyboard. It used to be hot swappable, but not anymore. On to pointy devices. I use a Logitech M505 wireless mouse until AA batteries go flat and I don't have new batteries right now so I ended up using my sister's mouse which is an Alcatraz M mouse. I will replace it with a gaming mouse soon but we'll see in the next part. On to the tablet which most of you guys noticed earlier. This is an XP Pen Star G640 that I bought used for 90 ringgit about a year ago. It works perfectly fine and now it has a tablet cover that I made myself. I did this to avoid further scratches on the actual tablet surface. This is the second batch I have done in recent times with better printing quality than before. Question is, what do you use this tablet for? Good question. I use this for Osu gameplay as you saw in most of my recent live plays on my dedicated Osu channel. Audio wise, I use a Xiaomi Mi Piston Fresh Edition earbuds. I bought those earbuds to replace my JBL earbuds which unfortunately have bad wiring which resulted the audio can be heard on the other side. Or worse, no signs of audio whatsoever. Talking about the audio quality on Mi Piston earbuds, it sounds great but not as good as like an audiophile great audio equipment but it should work fine for average reasoners like me. Question is, does the setup upgrade work? Actually, yeah, it works well. My productivity workflow is getting better than ever, especially when I open Discord while doing things on the internet or writing the script while watching a video. That works as well, but what about video editing? That works as well, but it takes time for me to get used to it. I will plan to get a laptop and monitor arm for this setup since I don't have a big desk. But if I have a chance to get a bigger desk, I would just get a laptop cooler and be done with it. Well, I don't know. Plans will change later. Let me talk about an annoying thing about the original position for the USB hub I use and that is the card reader. I put the micro SD card in it and that works. But trying to get it out is really annoying because there isn't enough clearance where my finger should go. Not even couple layers of double-sided foam tape will fix that so I ended up changing the position to close to the left side of the desk where the card reader should go and there you go, clearance issue solved. For now, my Legion 5 battle station is complete for now. Peripherals upgrade will be coming in the future but the setup upgrade is worth it. Man, I miss using dual display from my old setup back then as you all know in the past videos. That's going to be a wrap up of this video. More stuff with the setup will be coming soon. Thanks for watching. Like, share this video, subscribe and hit the bell icon so you never miss out recent content like this. And I'm sorry about the fireworks noises. There's nothing I can do about it. So yeah, catch y'all next time and stay safe everybody. The Teltaku signing out.